Hey there, YouTube fam. Welcome back. William Cody here with the Lost Ones. And this is going to be an update show. Look at this beautiful sunset we're getting in Arizona. We're here in Buckeye, Arizona. And the wind has stopped so I can make a video. How about that, y'all? Look, I'm thinking about you guys at home. We're here for the search for Daniel Robinson, the 24-year-old geologist who went missing in Buckeye, Arizona. He actually went missing this way, over this hill, a half mile. So we're a half mile northwest of where he wrecked his vehicle. So see, we're camped out in this wash here. We're keeping a low profile so we're not up on the hills where people can see us. This is a nice quiet wash hidden in case of the, you never know what kind of shady characters and stuff around in these areas. Seems to be a main travel route for migrants. That's all right, I don't have any beef with them. We're just here on a search. So I actually learned Spanish. Busquera y rescata. Busquera y rescata. That means search and rescue. So in case I do come up on some drug mules or traffickers or somebody, I can beg for my life at gunpoint. <laughs> Just kidding. But how you doing today is uh, I'm gonna this today's day three, and I just want to give some updates. So it's been interesting day today, to say the least. So regarding the bones the remains that were found they are human remains so what i did was i screwed up in arizona um i did i wasn't aware of this but if you find human remains you're not allowed to touch it um you're supposed to just take pictures of it mark the gps in the spots and then report it on a website so that is actually what i should have done what i didn't what i ended up doing you know as you all know by that video is i uh, bagged it up and everything well, I did that because I wasn't sure if it was animal or not, and I was under the assumption that David Robinson had a bone specialist or some kind of bone person that wasn't a part of the actual police department because he's having so much trouble with the Buckeye Police Department. So <clears throat> I assumed wrong, never assume, and uh, so I got in big trouble. Uh, they are not happy with me, to say the least. Um, and... Let me tell you, Buckeye Police Department do not play, y'all. They do not play. They have no... I started to film when they pulled up, and I was immediately shut down. They do not care about First Amendment. I'll tell you that right now. And I'm not a First Amendment auditor, a guy that's going to be like, you know, those First Amendment auditor guys telling them how to do their job. They don't play that game out here. Uh, Maricopa County Jail is notorious, and they throw people in there for long periods of time. Um there's evidence of possible i mean i'm not calling out anything because i'm down here still in the county so i do respect law enforcement i back the blue uh you know i'm on a fire department i was on a fire department for a long time so um you know i respect what they do and this is some tough country to have to police y'all you got to put that in the equation too they're used to so much so many calls so much drama and bs all the time um they were saying actually that the airplanes were landing on sunset parkway which is the main parkway you turn off of to get back here that drug mules were landing by planes and dumping off drugs fentanyl and everything and taking back off i mean this was just recently so there's a lot of crazy activity they got to deal with a lot of stuff so i get it um and i'm not trying to force a camera in somebody's face y'all i'll be honest I ha i'm happy with youtube i explained what i did and they are not cool with the youtube 100 percent shut me down you know, and I almost got in trouble for tampering with human remains. So what I have to do is go put the bones back where I found them, mark each bone with GPS exactly where I found them, which luckily I've already done that. So I have to go replace them, and then I have to go to a website, upload the GPS coordinates and the thick pictures and the area where the bones are, and then let the Buckeye Police Department take it from there. Okay, as far, uh, in regards to the infinity that was found, 
Okay, so I've been like a thorn in Buckeye Police Department side since I got here. I'm this guy from Colorado that just shows up and uh, boom, stolen vehicle. Here's human remains, you know. And uh, so I'm, I'm creating a lot of paperwork, I think. And uh, they're not, not happy about that. Um, Mr. Robinson and them have kind of been going back and forth. And it's kind of been some drama. So I don't really want to get involved with all that kind of stuff, y'all. So I'm just going to do what they said to do. I'm going to go back and put the bones back. And then let them handle it from there. And uh, I'm we're down here now, you know, right near Daniel's wrecked vehicle. So, but anyway, to add to the human remains that were found, um, the bone is short. So it would have been a shorter person. So we think it was maybe um, a Hispanic, a shorter person. Daniel's 5'8". It was not from a person that was 5'8". So we can go ahead and put the lid on the, if it's Daniel. It wasn't. Um, and the bones were a lot older than would have been from last summer. So, um, that's where we're at with that. So I'm going to go return the bones very quickly and quietly so I can stay out of trouble and I don't have to go to Maricopa County Jail and wear those pink outfits. Uh, you know, I've heard you, I don't know if y'all know about the Maricopa County Jail, but they make the men all wear pink, so... I think I'm good on that. I mean, I don't have, I don't judge anyone who likes pink, by the way. But, um, <laughs> but we got to get home. You know, I got dogs, so we got to be very careful with what we do in other states. You know, we don't like, we don't trespass here at the Lost Ones or do anything that would um, jeopardize me having to take my dog. Could you imagine if I had to take my dogs to like the pound or get have them, you know, taken away? They would. That would be the worst thing for me. Like, I don't mind going to jail for something, but if the dogs were worried, like, they don't know what's going on. So, um, that's kind of where we're at with that. So, that's the infinity, and that's the human remains. Um, so, I am just trying to lay low. I'm out way out here in the desert, away from everybody and everything. Y'all, the nearest uh, bit of, uh, nearest home or anything is an hour away. So, I mean, we're out here. So, but it's nice if you listen. It's quiet. It's beautiful out here. No wind. There's no wind blasting. You know, y'all can be uh, grateful for that. So, our plans for today's day three, tomorrow's day four. Our plans for tomorrow, we're going to hit it hard. We're going to wake up early in the morning here. We're going straight that way. We're going to do a grid zigzag pattern all the way to where Daniel's vehicle was. I'm going to do a short video once I get to the vehicle site because there's still glass on the ground. And um, so that's our plans. The reason why we came down south of here, uh, or I mean north of the crash site, is because no one really searched this way very much. Everyone went to, from the vehicle towards town, towards the road that he came in on. Everyone assumed that he went back the way he, he drove in. Or whoever drove the vehicle drove in. Now I have a theory. His seatbelt was worn the whole time. It says said by the black box um, and, until the initial crash happened. So in my mind, that's Daniel wearing his seatbelt still. If he ran into uh, some shady, the seatbelt would have been taken on and off. There would have been evidence of that. So y'all, in my mind, I think he's out here somewhere. I think it's been overlooked. I'm telling you, this is some tough country tough country we're out in the middle of nowhere everything bites pokes and stings you there's rattlesnakes the rattlesnake just woke up so that's another thing we got to worry about with the dog i mean if they get stung by one of those little pink rattlesnakes it's, it's over for them they say to put a tourniquet on it but they're going to lose a limb but uh you know that's my biggest fear please god uh, protect us tomorrow but we're going to hit it hard and zigzag, and I don't think this area has been searched very. People drive up and down here, but no one gets out and looks underneath the bushes, the tree. We go through everything. We get up high, get down low, go, we go through the ravines. We do it all. So we, left, we leave no stone unturned. And I got a good feeling for some reason. Like where I was looking over at the Gila River, it just I didn't have the feeling like he was there. I actually have a feeling like he's here. So I've been praying to the Creator today. I've been praying to God all day to please help us bring closure to David Robinson. He did, he, he served his country proudly. He's a decorated soldier, and he deserves this. He deserves closure from his son. He deserves help from the police department. Uh, so 
we're gonna give it our all. Like I said, today's only Monday, so we got we got the rest of the week to to search here. And I, for some reason, man, I got the feeling. You know, they said they put in ten thousand man hours out here. Listen, that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much country. Like it was a little overwhelming when I first got here and got up on this hill right here um, and looked around. It's just vast desert as far as you I can see. It looks like the same terrain, just nonstop, just endless. So he wrecked his vehicle. Uh, by the glass, it looked like he smashed his head. Um, Buckeye Police Department agrees he smashed his head very hard. Uh, I'm I'm running with that. I really think that he had a bad head injury. It was June. It was blazing hot. He got out. He, you know, when you have a bad head injury, they said you get hot and you take your clothes off. Maybe that's why the clothes were there. Maybe he changed into something cooler because he was planning on hiking out. You know, and I think he left there with a head injury and he's still where he sat, maybe got concussed, went into a coma. That's kind of my and dehydrated you know and overheating with a head injury you know it's very that's the most plausible in my mind of what happened so we're gonna run with that we're gonna search this whole area around here we're gonna give it I mean we're gonna hit it hard we're in good shape we've gotten used to the terrain I've gotten a lot of Sun today I'm nice and suntanned the dogs are loving this the Sun and they've gotten used to it they don't get so exhausted when they first did it's like you know, 80, 90 degree weather is tough on dogs when they come from negative 10 degrees up in, you know, Nevada and Colorado. So that's the plan. Um, we're going to lay low. We're going to lay low from the coyotes, uh, the dog coyotes and the people coyotes. We're going to lay low from Maricopa County Sheriff and law enforcement and the Border Patrol. So we're kind of hiding and staying away from everything. So we're going to lay low. But, uh, man, I, I got a real good feeling about this guy, so stay tuned. You're not going to miss this next episode. I'll come give you all another update tomorrow, but hopefully we can get into something good. And uh, give it a like and subscribe down at the bottom. I sure would appreciate it so I can keep doing this and we can keep helping people like David Robinson the second. He deserves it. Like I said, he's a veteran, so he's not getting any help. So we need to help him out, guys. So say a prayer that we bring closure to Mr. Robinson. He deserves it. Um, I want to say God bless. I want to show you this beautiful country one more time before we go to, to bed tonight. I'm exhausted. I'm ready to go to bed, y'all. It's been a long day. The dogs are whooped. But we sure are enjoying this beautiful sunset out here. And I got my Crocs on. I haven't been able to wear them in a while. So it's been warm boots up until now. Now I got the Crocs on. So we're about to hit the hay, y'all. So have a good evening. We'll talk to you tomorrow.